Welcome back, everybody. I'm Canadian Moose Plays, and this is Rural Canada A. In today's episode, we are going to build a university and a small couple little homes, more high-density residential for the area, but I'm really excited to showcase this episode for all of you. Here's the area that we worked on in the last episode, which was a heck ton of fun getting another classic downtown block done, but we're going to shift focus here and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful empty plot, and that's where the university is going to sit. We're going to kick things off, though, first with some inspiration. The places that you're seeing on screen here, we've got Thompson Rivers University. It's the area that I'm most familiar with, the university that I know the most about, really familiar with the layout. But I also wanted to take a look over at uh, UBC Okanagan, and uh, which is located in Kelowna, and kind of take a look at how theirs is. Now, there's one thing that I noticed about both of these universities, and it seems to be a theme throughout Okanagan cities, is roundabouts. So I'm going to get this out of the way right off the bat. The roundabouts look really, really cool. They're awesome. I'd love to do it. I tried a few iterations, and they all failed and looked horrible, and so we don't really have a roundabout yet. <laughs> I, I'm just going to throw it out there. I suck at roundabouts. Like, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there, expose myself. Uh, I'm not going to do in roundabouts. And I tried. I tried a few iterations, scrapped the footage. It just didn't look good. But, you know, it is what it is. If somebody wants to make a, you know, cool little Okanagan roundabout ass and, you know, put it up on the workshop, I will gladly subscribe to it. We're going to come in here and start the groundwork for this university. And again, it's taken a lot of inspiration from Thompson Rivers University and uh, kind of the surrounding area there in Kamloops. And so we're going to kick off with this intersection here, uh, which is going to have those kind of like dedicated lanes that I see common throughout Canadian cities. It's not distinct to rural cities. We have them here in Vancouver, but it's distinct to at least... Um, well, I assume American cities do as well, too. It's kind of popular throughout lots of cities, but distinct to, to Canadian cities. <laughs> so we're going to get that all sorted out here using Node Controller and sort of stretch it there as close as I can get with it. But I'm really excited to finally bring you the university. Um, I still feel like maybe we don't have big enough population to be doing an episode like this, but it was something fun that I kind of knew that I wanted it to sit up here. It adds a nice kind of like view as well from the downtown. But, I don't know, just something fun, right? Like, something fun to switch up from the monotonous downtown blocks. This is also going to be the first video. I did experiment with it a bit in City Skylines Netherlands, but I feel like I really found kind of what it's going to look like going forward. But I threw up a poll in the community tab for what length of video people are interested in seeing. Uh, and I got some awesome feedback. Um, like, uh, well, I guess just votes on the poll, which is really cool. So this is going to be a bit of a longer episode episode. I don't know that this is going to be the length for every video. Some will definitely be shorter, but this is going to be the style going forward. You're going to see a lot more edits. I basically reached a point where I was getting way too stressed about uh, the videos. I was trying to include all the footage, so I was rushing to get builds done, and it just was, yeah, it just wasn't good on my mental health. And this feels like, this episode feels so much better. I'm so happy with the end product. It didn't feel rushed at all, and I just personally feel so much better about this content. It will lead to longer videos, which is why I threw the poll up there, but as we can see in the results, that um, that doesn't seem to bother too many people, which is kind of cool. It makes sense, too. A lot of the creators I look up to, they have quite long videos, obviously, infrastructurist and city planner plays, um, and so they're, they're you know, quite, <laughs> quite long episodes there. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's really cool, but let me know. Um, let me know your feedback on the, on the video. Uh, it's not... I make it sound like it's drastically different. It's not. It just is. I'm filming for a lot longer now. And then that means I'm editing the footage a lot. So you'll see a lot of cuts. Whereas you wouldn't have seen that before. And then we do have. It'll be more noticeable in the not so live play. It's like not really a live play anymore. I took a lot of inspiration from Prez on it. Um, but as always, just share your feedback and let me know if you're like, wow, you, the video is way different. I don't like this. Like, please let me know. Um, likewise, if you do like it, let me know as well too. So we're going to come in here and try to figure out the buildings that I want there. So that's a new asset from Smiley's, but it just didn't kind of fit the vibe. Looking over here in Kamloops, this is the area that I'm kind of trying to take. Well, definitely taking inspiration from, but not really doing it one-to-one, -one, more just inspired 
inspired by. And so I end up going with these smileys. Uh, I think they're called modern condo assets. They are freaking amazing. Oh my god, these these assets here, these this whole modern condo collection from Smiley's is chef's kiss. It is so Canadian and so like I'm sure that there's stuff like this, you know, throughout. We I should say North American, but I don't know. To me, it's hella Canadian. Um, and yeah, they ended up fitting perfectly. So we're gonna slap some trees in there. Just add a little nice foliage to it. I guess the other thing that I want to talk about as well too for this video, it's not crazy detailed. I know in a lot of the episodes we go into kind of ridiculous detail in some scales. Maybe it's Prez wearing off on me. I watched a lot of his videos recently just because I, I miss his content to be honest. Um, and it sounds like from what I've heard that he's not going to be coming back at all to YouTube, which is super sucky. But you know, I, I just hope things are well for him. But I've been watching a lot of his content recently, you know, feeling nostalgic and uh, definitely wore off on me. But I'm thinking about doing a little bit less detail as we go forward. Now, I talked about this in City Skylines Netherlands. And I'm going to take some of the ideas that I got in City Skylines Netherlands and implement them here. But if at any point, again, I guess the biggest thing is just let me know if you hate anything that we've done. This video will show you kind of the detail that I'm going for going forward and kind of how the videos are gonna shape up as we do go forward. So again, if it's too different, too weird, whatever, please do let me know. Super excited to share as well too, we'll be doing City Skylines 2 Early Access Part 2. Uh, this When you're seeing this video, it's Monday, this Wednesday. So come back on Wednesday, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, come back on Wednesday because we're doing City Skylines 2 Early Access Part 2. And that kicks off the same time as all of my other videos. So I'm super excited to bring that to all of you. It's going to be, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm really excited, man. Really excited. But anyways, let's talk about what we're doing on screen here. You know, and enough enough rambling. Oh, and how did I forget? Um, immediately following the video, I'll be live streaming on YouTube. It's our first ever YouTube live stream. We smashed the 1K subscriber goal. And uh, as a reward, you all get a live stream. And then I held a poll too for what city you all want to see. And everybody voted for Rural Canada A, which I'm not surprised. <laughs> so uh, I'll be live streaming Rural Canada A for all of you immediately following the um, uh, the the cities, the City Skylines 2 gameplay video. I'll be live streaming. Uh, yeah, so super excited to um, to, to, to bring that to uh, to all of you, and and uh, you all get to meet me if you haven't met me over on Twitch yet. So that's super exciting. So I'm messing with the buildings here, and my main goal is to have varying heights here because I think it's going to add a lot to the look of it. So I mess around with a few different options there, but I eventually get it when I start adding in the um, like this is the trade campus. I guess I should talk about that first. So we're going with the trade campus. Um, I don't know. It just felt like something that like made sense to me. Like growing up in, in like when I went to high school in the Okanagan in Kamloops, right? Um, it made sense to me that um, like trade trades were heavy. They were like the big thing. And so it kind of made sense to me to do a uh, trade school here. The layout took a little time to kind of figure out and get sorted. It was kind of, I don't know. It was hard to figure out what I really wanted this to look like. The end result though Holy heck and heck, I'm so, so happy with the end result. It just, oh my god, it ends up looking so, so beautiful. I, I'm really happy with it, but it took a while to, like, get there, you know? <laughs> so I've laid down some of the dormitories here. I'm going to add some parking for the dorms. And yes, one of the buildings is facing the wrong way, but I think I figured out here. Is it here? Yeah, there it is. I'm like, wait a second. One of these dorms is not like the others. You know, that classic... Uh, I know, I'm an incredible singer. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to come in here to add a little road access way for them as well, too. Uh, but I wasn't happy with the way that it turned in there and felt like it should be a little bit better. You know, add, add just a little bit of, little bit of flavor to it, right? So we add that road in that's going to connect up to the parking for the dormitories there. Or dorms. Yeah, dorms. Dorms. No, that's the right saying, you know? Uh, I never went to like traditional university. I went to university for, um, well, not university, like a trade school. Uh, I went to a trade school for firefighting. So I never went to like a, um, like an actual university. So my knowledge on it is like very varying, <laughs> so to say. And I initially thought about how cool would it be if that building sat over top of the road. I could PO it. Um, and then I realized that I just didn't have the patience to... <laughs> to do that it also didn't really make that much sense for the okanagan so i decided you know what to heck with it and likewise it's building up we're placed and we're going to end up getting rid of it i just couldn't find a good it'll come back it'll come back eventually i just couldn't find a good spot for it 
Um, oh, and one other thing that I want to talk about for this build as well, too. I haven't added, uh, I want to add a bus depot, like a bus loop here. I don't add it in this episode because what I think I'm going to do is an entire episode dedicated to buses. And in that episode, we would add the bus loop to the university. And it would be an entire, like, transit-oriented episode. I know that we did do the bus depot and we have transit in the downtown. But I want to get the downtown really shaped and kind of... I would say like complete and then we'll start adding in like do a proper proper bus episode I think as well the bus depot episode's great like check it out if you haven't um but uh, you know a proper one that's like just all transit type thing maybe we do some stuff with rail as well too um but but we will do that yeah yeah so coming in here gonna take a look I I, I believe this building here okay I did uh, yeah I did look the road there I realized that a bunch of these buildings you'll see it like later on in the episode but a bunch of these buildings, they aren't connected because I thought that they only needed paths. Turns out that some of them actually need roads. I didn't realize that they, like, well, not all of them. Not all of them need roads, but uh, some did. Also, this, um, which I, I didn't give them roads. This is the moral of that story. And so hopefully they still function is what I was trying to say. But this road here is inspired by this road here in Kamloops. And ours is a little bit different, obviously. But uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool to have that road that just like offshoots and kind of bypasses some of the other more traffic heavy roads the issue is is that when i connect it it ends up becoming like the most busy road and that's probably to do with the fact that it connects straight into the highway so you're going to see me adjust it here connect it in and this is connected directly to this highway and so that's you know less than ideal also i really should convert that road it's cool for it to be suburban like closer to the downtown but here it really should just be like a highway asset and not have sidewalks um but yeah, this this uh, ends up causing an insane amount of traffic for the... Uh... Also, ignore that. It's really messy. I know. Don't worry about it. It's it's fine. <laughs> when we actually get to that part of like the downtown, I'll properly detail that and connect the road so that it looks nice and not like a mess. So do not worry. It's fine. Uh, it's like Jeremy Thunder said this in his Neptune, uh, Neptune City series. If it doesn't look finished, it's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand by that. If you see something you're like, man, that doesn't look complete. That's because it's not complete. Um, so here we are adjusting with these uh, heights, right? Because I really want, like, it's so, like, Kamloops is so hilly. It's a city in a valley, but it's so heckin' hilly. And so I really wanted to capture some of these crazy heights that you see there with the university. I also learned through this episode, you know, researching and, and planning it out in my own experience. Um... Universities are kind of weird, eh? They're like, uh, that's, that's a horrible way to phrase it. Uh, what I mean is they have weird layouts. Like, they don't make any sense. They're almost European the way that they're laid out. It's very interesting. Not to mention the insane obsession that the Okanagan seems to have with roundabouts at the university. They look really cool and they're great. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't dislike them, but it's very interesting <laughs> the way that they're laid out. So I tried to kind of capture that. Mine ends up being a little bit more you know part for the course grid but i feel like this looks better i had tried a couple iterations of this again one with the roundabouts and it just didn't look good and the end result on this is so much better once we get it sorted here so i'm coming in and adding in uh, what is this the police academy i think i i, I forget i have forgotten it's an asset though <laughs> also these university like this has just been uh well vanilla but it's dlc uh, university DLC. Um, the assets are freaking amazing. I really, really like them. So we add that one up on the hill and it becomes a pinnacle, like beautiful focal point. I love, love, love it. And I'm really glad that we got, we're able to kind of work with the heights as well. So we come in and add in a, uh, another huge university built in there. The issue is, is that we'd already placed it. So we got to get rid of it. <laughs> Eat it, remove it. And now what we're going to do is come in and there's a place in Kamloops called... Uh, so Kamloops is known as like the tournament capital center because um, it hosts the most tournaments. So it's the tournament capital of Canada. <laughs> but it also has... Uh, I'm completely blanking on the name right now. Why am I... Man, I can't believe I can't remember the name of it. But you all are seeing it right now. This place. Uh, and I've been here countless, countless times. Um, cool place to go swimming. Um, cool place to work out, too. It's got a gym. I worked out there. It was nice. It was nice. Good times. And, uh, yeah, just a cool place that I've spent a lot of time at. <laughs> um, and so that's why I want to include the, uh, the aquatic center there because it felt like, um, the asset itself, too, like, it just really looks like, 
um, the Kamloops University to me um, in, in that kind of area. So, yeah, I wanted to include that. It's a beautiful asset, too. Like, holy, holy heck. And then we added some tennis there as well, too, so you can see beside... Uh, beside the pool there as well and then this pavilion doesn't stay but i really want to try and incorporate it somehow that little red roofed building it's so gorgeous i gotta find a way to incorporate it somehow it's really it, it looks like it would be a ice hockey arena for a whl team to, you know to be honest <laughs> we've already got one in the downtown but damn that's a good asset for it it reminds me of the one in Kelowna, actually uh for the Kelowna rockets <laughs> Uh, so coming in with these uh, basketball courts here, we're going to add them by the uh, tennis there. The cool thing about those basketball courts is that they animate because they are vanilla. Uh, so a lot of these vanilla things uh, have animations in them and they will um, like just custom add it. And it's absolutely gorgeous. On top of that too, the track field here that you'll see. And eventually when we add football, got to have a football field because... Uh, Actually, fun fact, I'm, man, I'm going on too many tangents, but fun fact, we added football. It was crucial because, again, real-life inspiration from Thompson Rivers University. The BC Lions uh, train there, so that's a uh, CFL team, Canadian Football League, uh, our version of the NFL uh, for those um, not from Canada. And, uh, yeah, the BC Lions uh, train at, uh, at Thompson Rivers University as well, too, which is really cool. And so I wanted to include the the football one, but they all have animations. Was was <laughs> what I was trying to say uh, before I got caught off on on that tangent there. So we're gonna come in, and I'm using the red brick pass, and I believe these are the amusement park paths from the vanilla uh, park life DLC, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. And they add a really nice theme to the area around the main, um, sort of like the main main the main building, the main campus. <laughs> but again, the sad part is that the main campus has to be connected to a road. I don't connect it to a road at any time. I kind of just accept it. Um, and so, I don't know. Let me know if you think that's going to break it or anything. Everything seemed fine and seems fine so far, even though it's not connected. And I hope it stays that way. People come. People are going to school. It's great. But, um, yeah, I hope it stays that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm coming in, drawing out the pass. I know that they look a little bit messy now. Don't worry, I'll come in and touch them up. But it's just to uh, to lay them down and get an idea for the foundation. And then I saw this area with these sky bridges, and I thought, oh, okay, we've got to add a road through it, right? So we go with this tiny little road, um, just because, like, how cool is that? You know, a little road that cuts through the building, the sky bridge, kind of helps to interconnect the buildings a little bit better. And I think it looks really cool. It's awesome seeing the, the uh, vehicles go through it as well, too. But yeah, I think it's a nice little touch, a nice little, um, I don't know, maybe you're dropping off uh, a student or, um, I don't know what the purpose of it is other than the fact that it looks cool. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's good enough for me. Again, dragging these paths out, and this is just to kind of get the layout down and think like, okay, this is what we're going to do with this video because I don't really, um... Yeah, I need to. I, I like to figure out the layout first, and then we can come in and beautify it and make all the things nice. But I want to figure out, you know, is this how it's going to be? Um, and it helps to plan out the buildings with that as well, too, right? So I know it's messy, but we'll come in and touch it up. Do not worry about that. That, um, man, I love that asset as well, too. Oh, you know what I forgot as well, too, is that, uh, so the football one that we're using, there are custom stadiums for the university, right? But I went with one of the new ones here, this football stadium, and this is one of the new ones from Bad Peanut. And, uh, I think, if I remember correctly, that they still do function, like, they have games, right? Because they got the animations and stuff. So I think it should still function as, like, a university sport, I, I hope. If not, I think I have cube, uh, services I could use for it. But I think it. I think it does. I, I think it still functions by, uh, like as as university sports, which is really cool. And even if it doesn't, as long as it still functions, like, you know, it's good enough for me. So I'm coming in now with a road that's going to loop around the park in there, connect back into the main street, and then that other road that you saw draw off will likely go to suburbs, I'm thinking. It might go to industry as well, too, but probably suburbs. And now comes the fun part of turning off all of the park in there, because we got to get that yeeted. Get rid of it. Don't need it. Coming in and adjusting the parking lots here as well, too, but we got to turn all that parking off, because you can park in a parking lot, and that's it. No parking on the roads. It's 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 forbidden, um, especially because I'm going to use that parking spot uh, at the end of the episode here to turn it into a bike lane. 
So it's a really cool feature that I use a lot on those Hockenheim roads. It's just remove the parking, make it a bike lane. And how do you do that? You do that with the uh, bike lane networks that you'll see at the end of the uh, episode here. But uh, so spoiler warning. <laughs> but yeah, I just converted into um, into a parking uh, or a bike bike <laughs> invisible bike lane, which is really cool. Um, I still haven't seen people use it, so I hope that they do eventually. Um, but during the film and the cinematics, I didn't see anybody using it, which I guess that's realistic for the Okanagan, but I'd like to see a couple people use it. It doesn't have to be an insane amount, but, you know, maybe just a couple. <laughs> and already people are flocking to the university, which is really cool to see that they're already, like, getting excited, man. Getting excited for the university. Um, so that's really cool to see that it's already popping off. It also confirms that, like, things seem to be functioning. Hopefully, it, it gives me it gives me faith that uh, that that things are working, <laughs> and that's good enough for me, you know. So we're just coming in here and adding all the parking spaces and then trying to get it lined up, which proved to be a little bit of a headache, but we got there in the end. And then you just use node controller on the ends. So these are parking lot roads by Bad Idea, I think is how you say it. And uh, yeah, use them all over, and they're going to be kind of the method. Like I know I have a really cool method for creating custom parking and custom like uh well you've, you've seen them all countless times custom parking lots but i don't know i like to do um parking lot road sometimes you know i, I like to do um something that's i don't know it's like custom parking lots they take so so long and i like to um do ones that that uh don't take so long sometimes you know <laughs> plus i kind of really like the look of the uh, parking lot roads if i'm being honest i think that they look really good they're a fun asset they're easy to use and they look really good so here it is as i told you do not worry we're gonna sort out the pathways there and here we come just coming in touching them up and uh yeah letting them up to the buildings making them look a little bit more symmetrical and and nice there for it um line it up with the road as well too because i think it's a nice accent that red brick to kind of the whole area here it adds a nice nice flavor to it some some spices on on top of this this build as a whole here but these clues paths are really nice and i thought about using the brick paths all over but i felt like it gave a nice pop if i used it just around the um uh, around the main building right the main campus building the old main hall if you want to say it like the old the og building right and i feel like it's a good spot to be using that instead so we're going to create a gap here in this path that I probably should add, like now that I'm thinking about it, watching this footage back and recording the commentary here, I probably should add a cut through at this road, like a, a crosswalk. That probably would be a, a, a good idea there. Because I don't think that they can, like I know that if you get two paths close-ish to each other, um, pedestrians could kind of float between the two of them, and even if they're not connected. So maybe they'll do that there, but I could also just add a crosswalk and then everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, which I probably should do, you know, but here we are. I thought about adding that as a um, traffic light there, but um, four-way stop made a little bit more sense. And we're doing kind of four-way stops all over the, uh, yeah, all over the area there. Coming in here now, just adjusting the stop signs as well, too. Also, fun fact, right now, I don't know if you guys can hear over my voice the, so the song that's playing right now. Name the City Skyline series that this song is from. I'll give you, I'll give you like 10 seconds, you know, comment below, name it. Also here, what you see me doing <laughs> is kind of realizing now that a bunch of the buildings aren't connected, right? And so this one unfortunately requires a road, which it's just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give it a road and I hope that it works and it does seem to be working, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, coming in with the paths to connect them to uh, the buildings so that at least the buildings that say they don't have a path, that's easy enough to fix. I can come in and do that. Again, the road one, it just is what it is. I do know that the basketball courts and the tennis courts do still function if they're not connected to a path. So I'm not too worried about that one there. They'll be, um, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be completely fine with the, with the uh, yeah, without the path there. Coming in here and adding the path around. I Man, I wish I could remember the names of these, uh, <laughs> uh, the names of these buildings here, but um, alas, I don't. But this cool... You know, trade school building. It's a gorgeous asset, though. It's, like, really, really beautiful. But, yeah, I had a path around, <laughs> around it. And then I realized that everything, like, despite this being based in the Okanagan, which is a desert climate, um, everything around the university seemed to be grass and, like, 
like wet lush that's that's a better way to say that uh <laughs> uh, appeared to be lush grass and so i wanted to come in and uh, sort of capture this one too and it kind of looks cool contained to like this one area where it's like here's all this lush grass and then surrounded by this desert it adds a cool look to it i don't know it, it's 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 really nice i add a lot more than what's gonna stay because i do want some areas where it is desert like when you're passing sort of the paths that take you up the hill that area realistically to me would still be desert and so i want to try and capture that um because, yeah, you're going to see me go crazy here, right? Like, grass literally everywhere. But that does not end up staying because it's, um... I don't know, it just didn't feel too realistic to me. Like, I, I feel like there would still be areas, even within the campus. Like, yeah, have cool, nice, green, lush grass around the main campus area there. But I feel like there still would be areas where, um, you know, the desert has won, so to say. <laughs> and so here I am going to try and get this path lined up. Get it nice and straight there with the building, just so it doesn't hurt my eyes anymore. <laughs> and then we had a path down the side there as well, too, that's going to connect into the road, connecting the lower half with the upper half via paths, which is really cool. And again, this height elevation, man, it makes the entire build, honestly, in my opinion. It is so, so cool. And you'll see it in the, the shots as well, too. Like, it's... It adds a nice, like, height and depth to it. And then I really don't like the cliff themes uh, in, in this game and how it is when it's, like, really jagged and sharp like this. So we're coming in with gray flames of rocks to try and cover it, and it makes it look so much better. Like, it, it oh, it's way, way, way better. Um, these rocks are heckin' awesome. I love this. <laughs> um, they have a nice texture to it, too, where they, like, look like something that would exist in the Okanagan to me. And so we're going to come in and just cover up that whole texture there. Um, again, nothing against the theme itself, but the theme is great. It's uh, not so rocky, I think is what I'm using. Um, it's just that they just don't look good when it's super sharp like that. And covering it up with rocks is absolutely the way to go. Ends up making it look so, so much heckin' better. Coming in and removing the parking spaces. And it's something I'm going to do to kind of all the buildings as well. To a lot of these university buildings come with built-in parking spaces. And it's something that I've kind of been meaning to remove. I think there's some that still need it. Or no, I think I got them all after the cinematics. I think and I went and removed it. So if you see them, they'll be gone. Because um, we're going to do our own parking with the parking lot. Uh, or sorry, big. No, yeah, parking lot roads. Yeah, that's the one. There's two of them. There's big parking lot roads and, and parking lot roads. And they're, they're very similar names, you know? <laughs> so here you're going to see me start to add the desert when I realize that it does kind of make sense here that it would be, you know, more desert-esque. And we're going to use the new mountain grass from Padelmo for this area. And holy heck, does this area look good. This, like, man, this little, these separation areas here, but tied together with nature, end up making this area look insane. Like, it, it looks so, so heckin' good when it's done. So I'm gonna come in and try and figure out... Uh, there it is! Yeah, there's a small version too, which is super cool. Shout out to Demo for that. Um, so if you use the big one over and you're like, oh shoot, the big one doesn't fit here, you can come in with the small one around it too, which is really, really, really cool. So coming in and just line that up there. A bunch of the pieces, so they were kind of clipped by the rock, um, so they weren't to terrain height there, but super easy fix for that. But already, even just with that grass, eh? Look at how good this is looking. Dang. Love it. Also, this is a new brush. I think I talked about this. No, maybe. I don't know if I have. I feel like I talked about this in a live stream, actually, instead. Um, but yeah, that's a, a new brush that I had called Dry Brush. And so it's a couple of the small uh, generic trees that we use in the uh, Greenway brush. But uh, it has a bunch of sage, like the... Uh, you know, the, 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 the dry, the nice dry sage. And it's a brush that I'm going to use throughout the build for that area where, like, it's not going to be a huge, dense forest. You want kind of those smaller trees. It just adds a really nice look to it. The sage assets are freaking awesome as well, too. So I came in there, added a bunch of the mountain grass, and now I'm coming in with that dry brush again that I'm going to use throughout this build. Because, um, like, look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is looking awesome. It's crazy what just, like, a few assets can do, right? So that's just some grass, some trees, like, and, and that's it. And he's using the forest brush, too, as well, uh, to save time. I'm going to come in and add some ponderosas by hand as well. But, yeah, it's really crazy what a few assets can do to a build and how much it can make it look good. And, and specifically trees, right? Because trees are the ones that really make it look nice and beautiful. And they just add so much, man. When you get a couple trees in your build... 
They can hide everything and make anything look good. So we're coming up with the Ponderosas here and just gonna add that sort of detailing to this area as well too, because Ponderosa trees are everywhere in the Okanagan. Of course, you know, Ponderosa trees thrive in desert climates. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those all over here and they add a really, really nice, um, they kind of add to like the, the skyline almost, like in their own way. They work as kind of a skyline piece, which is really, really cool. They look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, man. And the assets, too, by the like, Gray Flame, they're so good. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, that's looking awesome. I'm really, really stoked on that. That's cool. Really happy with the look at that. So now we're coming in and adding the crosswalks that I forgot to add when I was doing the... Um, Initial layout. It's too focused on the road, so I forgot to add some stuff. Is that a guy in a toga outfit? I don't know if you guys saw that citizen walking by. That's cool. <laughs> I assume it Why? I don't know. I don't know. I assume it was. I, uh, I don't know. That, that looked cool to me. <laughs> so we get the crosswalks added throughout the build there, and then we're going to come in and do the tree detailing throughout the rest of the campus here. The Ponderosa trees are going to take the main stage and be kind of the, um, yeah, kind of the, the go-to tree. There, I, there's so many of them. Like, I, I looked at um, Thompson Rivers University, obviously, a lot for this build um, and, you know, was examining the nature and the kinds of trees that were used there. And it is just Ponderosas galore at Thompson, uh, Thompson Rivers University. So I figured, you know what? We've got gray flame Ponderosa trees that are insanely hot. They look so good. Um, so I'm like, heck yeah, we're going to use that all over the, the this build. Ah, oh, there's such a good tree. And it's cool using these, like, I don't know, branch it out and using, I guess, like, more forest trees, but using them as, like, decoration like this instead of, like, in a forest brush. It's kind of cool to me. It's something that I hadn't, um, yeah, I don't know, something that I hadn't done before. Um, like use it like that and then just coming in and decorating it up here right and leaving open space because you want sort of your, your citizens to um, I don't know have a place to like sit picnic tables that kind of stuff right um, and then I come in and just add those around to the back just so you really get that vibe of like the desert and the Okanagan with the Ponderosa trees being literally heckin everywhere <laughs> I should come in though and add some Douglas firs as well too those are kind of common and they look really good beside uh, Ponderosas. Like, Douglas firs look heckin' gorgeous uh, when they're uh, used alongside Ponderosa trees. They look so good. Coming in with these rose bushes as well, too, just to add a little pop to it. Um, I let this uh, place kind of empty, to be honest, because I'm debating on... It's something I'll come and do probably just off-stream. I'm debating on what I want to put there. I mean, if you have suggestions, let me know in the comments below. But I'm debating on what I should put there. Like, I'm thinking either a fountain... And I don't know if I should use manicured ga uh, gas. Well, manicured gas. Uh, manicured grass uh, decals there because you just don't really see manicured grass. I don't know. The decals just look more like European to me. Um, so I don't know. You know, like there's nothing that really, in, in my honest opinion... There's nothing that we have for this game that looks like a freshly mowed lawn. Like, I know people would say, well, that's is that what manicured grass is, right? Yeah, but not yes and no. So, I don't know. It's, it's um, I'll see if I can find something. <laughs> Although this grass here by Avatar, honestly, to me, is like the best grass of like, it's not overgrown, it's likely been mowed. This grass is probably my favorite for it. Um, so who knows? I might just go in and use that around the uh, the university there as well too. It's such uh, man, Abator absolutely crushed it with these assets. Like they are so damn good. They add such a beautiful look to it. Like they they honestly are are probably some of my favorite uh, grass assets. Right up there with Delmo too, and Delmo's is chef's heckin' kiss. <laughs> So I go in there and I thought that maybe there might be a smaller version of that, but unfortunately there isn't. So I just leave that area open. And then we're coming in to, around the parking lots here with more of that uh, mountain grass, the new mountain grass from Delmo. Or not crazy new, but you know, new, new-ish. <laughs> and we're using that to sort of surround the, the university buildings there. Now, the reason why I didn't go too crazy into the um, forest hillside that the university sits on top of is because I'm going to leave that for a future episode. So no spoilers. So close your ears. 
But uh, I'm thinking a nature reserve episode where we have a bunch of trails and stuff like that there. Um, and something for mountain biking. We got to do something for mountain biking, dirt biking, you know, off-roading, that kind of stuff in this build for sure. Um, and so, yeah, that, that, that'll be uh, that'll be trails. You know what would be really cool is if you could get, like, um, if, if I got some, like, long border assets made that worked as, like, a bus and I could do a bus loop up and down a hill. Like, oh, I think that'd be really cool. So you see them launch down the hill and... Um, I don't know how it would work for them to come back up, but that would be really cool. <laughs> so I come in with lots of the grass there, the mountain grass. It just adds a really, really nice look to it. And then we're going to come in with the abattoir grass because I feel like it would be more maintained down here, especially, you know, right beside the building. I feel like this area would be a lot more maintained with the grass there than the, uh, the you know, the mountain grass has a really, you know, less maintained, overgrown look. Um, and, and it's still in the university, sure. But it, it kind of works there. In my honest opinion, where we use it, it kind of works. So here's that infamous dry brush. And we're going to come in and touch up the area around the stadium there with that dry brush. And this is us kind of adding those sort of final touches to the area. Make it feel filled out. Some nice detail to it. And again, this is kind of the... There's some stuff that I want to add to it. You know, this is still very much... Um, an active project like it's not like done and dusted now um but i'm really kind of going for like how prez did columbia city and especially cabrillo that's kind of the level of detail i want to start to shift focus to um i love detailing don't get me wrong i absolutely love it but if i'm being honest i'm gonna say a really controversial take here i'm not a detailer <laughs> crazy right i i know obviously by you know literal standards i am but I only detail because I have to, like, if I don't detail something, it looks not good to me or not complete or not realistic. And so I don't like it, which is why I got into detail in the first place. Um, and I still, I, I do enjoy detailing. I do. Um, but uh, yeah, I think for the sake of like a YouTube project, less is more, in my opinion. And Prez's Cabrillo and honestly, Jeremy Thunder's Neptune City are the perfect examples of detail versus scale so i would say and if you don't know those series go check them out but that is going to be what you'll see from the channel going forward so we're coming in here now and we're going to add some tmpe to the intersections here and just sort of get the road sorted so that nobody's kind of crossing over those double lines but we're also nearing the end of the episode so we're getting close to the end here where we're going to switch into the new, not time-lapse anymore. It's a segment. If you watch City Skylines Netherlands, you'll know what it's called. But it's called the Let's Explore segment at the end. Um, again, yeah, the videos have changed up a bit, right? Like, they're, you know, different lengths now. A lot of cuts and edits in it. Um... If there's anything that you don't like or you don't like the changes or anything like that, please let me know. But uh, yeah, I'll leave you with this, the creation of the bike lane, the final thing that we do here, that invisible bike lane. And uh, I'll catch you all for the Let's Explore segment. Welcome back, everybody, to the Let's Explore segment. I want to kick things off, so I'm recording this after recording the commentary over the time lapse, and in that time, we made YouTube Partner. This is a huge, huge win for the channel here, and I want to take some time to say thank you to every single person who has ever supported me or the channel. This is just the first step in a long, amazing journey so much amazing content in the pipeline and i cannot wait to share it with all of you so just thank you so so much it means the absolute heckin world to me and speaking about content in the pipeline you're watching this on the monday this wednesday you're getting two huge things city skylines 2 
Early Access Part 2, as well as our first ever YouTube live stream that will occur immediately after the City Skylines 2 video. CS2 video drops at 9 a.m. PST, and I will go live at 9.30 a.m. on YouTube. So I'm super excited to meet all of you if you've never been to a Twitch live stream. And uh, we'll be live streaming rural Canada. So I'm super, super excited for this. Um, but yeah, thank you all so, so much for the amazing support. Uh, but yeah, you've been seeing footage of the build that we did. Let me know how you feel about the new video layouts. Um, the new style does seem to lend itself to longer videos, and I hope that's okay with everybody. I did a poll, and it seems like people like around the anywhere from like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so some of the videos, like this one's going to be a little bit longer, but most of the videos will kind of fall in that duration. Um, but yeah, I like the new style. It gives me a lot of creative freedom and it's way better on my mental health and less stressful. But look at these views. Look at this little desert pathway. Like how beautiful is this, hey? Oh my god, I would love to, to, to bike that, walk that. And then we got some people playing basketball here by the tennis courts. Oh, he hit the shot. Look at that, hey? Oh man, this was... I'm really excited. I, I don't know what to say. I'm just so excited for the, the future of this channel and the future content. Um, and this new style, I hope you like it. If you all do want the live playback, and again, if there's anything where you're like, uh, no, the new video style, I don't like it, please let me know. Your feedback helps me to improve the channel and helps me make better content for all of you. Man, this... Dude, these views... <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying that. And those courts with, like, the animation, seeing the players play basketball. Like, that's so, so heckin' cool. Um, and then, yeah, here we go. The the um, the beautiful uh, football uh, football court. Field. Field. Court. Jesus. Football field. <laughs> and then the, uh, the, the track one. And, again, both of these do have animations on it, which is really cool. And then we've got this beautiful hillside that sits. I believe it's the police academy that this one is. Look at that hillside, eh? Again, that would be another beautiful, beautiful walk. Maybe not as fun when the summer heat, you know, that Okanagan heat is bearing down on you. But, uh, I don't know. To me, I I, I like it. I, 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 um, it's much better as an autumn walk. <laughs> and then here it is, a beautiful, gorgeous parking lot to wrap it all up. But, uh... Yeah, that, that's pretty much all we've got for you for the episode. Again, I'm looking for a lot of feedback, and thank you all so much for the amazing support. As always, I want to give a huge shout-out to the people that support me on Patreon and Coffee: Disney Dude one Shane Turner, Fish Bob, Hey Guy Buddy, Braygard, William Epps, The Yed Underscore, Anthropophagic, The Jonah, Trevor Sabo, and Poplar Ponderosa. Thank you all so much for the support. I'm Canadian Moose Plays. This was Rural Canada A. Happy building. A.